And here we have Affinity Publisher paperback print templates for covers and manuscripts using Affinity Publisher. And I'm also including the theory behind the designs. These designs are all based on KDP designs and the templates in Word that are available from the KDP um, author website. But you may not have access to those and in any case they're in Word and not in Affinity Publisher. Well here they all are in Affinity Publisher. I'll show you how they're set up and they're all available. All 33 templates are available from my website. as downloads. Just download them as Affinity Publisher files and away you go. Now let's look first at print options for KDP. KDP is of course not the only printing house there is. But what they provide by way of templates and knowledge is invaluable. The following are the main points that they encourage you to follow. And some things they only hint at, like bleed, like to include or not to include, but yes, include it. Leave it out at your peril, because with Affinity Publisher, you can include bleed, and it, and it increases your page size slightly, and we'll talk about that a lot later. But when you come to export, you can turn the bleed off. So let's look at the main detail for creating print templates for your Affinity Publisher work. If your paperback is printed in black ink, you can choose cream or white paper. For paperbacks with colour ink, that's like children's storybooks, you can choose white paper, which shows a higher contrast for images and graphics. For example, you might even be publishing a textbook with lots of images, tables and charts. White paper will make these visual elements more striking and certainly easier to read. Now when choosing your ink and paper type, choose colour ink if any images in your paperback are supposed to print in colour. If you have a black and white version and a colour version, do two separate versions of the book. Remember that the cost of paperbacks printed in colour is higher. Paper type doesn't affect printing costs. And also, remember to set your document, well these are set up by default in Publisher, in these instances, to CMYK, not RGB. You don't want RGB for a print book, you want CMYK. Now trim sizes. Trim size can be a little confusing, but I'll hopefully try and sort that out for you. The most common trim size for paperbacks in the US is 6 inches by 9 inches. Now when setting up your book in KDP, this is the default in the print options section of the paperback content tab for the US market. There is a difference for the UK and European market and we'll come to that. If you want to enable expanded distribution with KDP, that is they distribute your book widely through all of the print publishing libraries, um, and it can help you re reach more readers through bookstores, online, retailers, libraries, etc. It has to meet the trim size eligibility requirements. And you can refer to the expanded distribution section in the KDP help topics sections. It's important to note that these sizes listed are not specific to KDP. They are in general industry standards. So you'll find the same size books mentioned in lots of places. These are standard trim sizes. Now trim size, I'll come to in a moment, don't confuse trim size with book size. There's a slight difference. Now you can choose from a variety of trim sizes, see the table below, as well as minimum and maximum page count by size. So if you have a trim size of 5 by 8 inches, the top one, you can have a minimum of 24 pages and a maximum of 828 for black ink and white paper. Black ink and cream paper, slightly less maximum. For colour ink, about the same. Now why that is, I don't know. Ask KDP, but keep those things in mind when you're designing your book and the spine. Now expand a distribution quick reference table for trim sizes and you'll see that in some cases you can have it and in some cases you can't. So if you've got a 5 by 8 book 
and it's colour ink and white paper, it's not available for um, expanded distribution. Now bleed. Bleed confuses a lot of people and the most complaints I see coming back from KDP particularly on the Facebook um, interest groups is people having their work rejected because there's no bleed or the bleed's too big or it's the wrong size. It's a printing term that refers to when printed items on a page such as images or illustrations reach all the way to the edge of the page. All book covers on KDP require bleed. So if you send them a book cover that is set up without bleed, they'll send it back to you. You can choose whether your interior has bleed or not. But if, you're, if you'd like to put your, a copy of your book cover as the first page of your printed book, it'll get sent back if it hasn't got bleed. When to choose bleed for your interior? Well, you should to choose bleed in print options if you have any images or illustrations in your book that you want to reach the edge of the page. If you have any image at all in the interior of your book, put bleed, even if it doesn't go to the edge. Even if just one page in your interior requires bleed, then you need to choose the bleed option in print options for the whole manuscript. So, what's the safety measure? Just set bleed on. If you don't need it, you can turn it off at export. Remember, you'll need to format your paper book manuscript file correctly to prevent a white border from appearing at the edge of the page when the book is printed. So they'll take the book. They don't print on standard A4 sheets of paper. There's no standard sheets of paper in a print shop. They print on huge rolls of paper and the pages are punched out of it. And when they trim it, they trim off the bleed. So you can have your image go right over the edge of the bleed, but where it's trimmed off is the inside edge of the bleed line. So the way you do this is increase your page size and then ensure that the image extends beyond the trim line. That's what your bleed line is. This way, when the book is trimmed to size, the image will reach all the way to the edge because a little bit of it will be trimmed off. So when calculating your book dimensions, use the following formula to calculate your page width and height. Now, fortunately in Affinity Publisher, you don't need to do this. It's all done for you. And you can test it yourself by setting up a 6x9 page and with bleed and without bleed, and you'll see that the page sizes are different with bleed than without bleed. You've got trim size is the trim height and the trim width. So the height, the bleed, is 0 0.125 inches by 2. That's a bleed line at the top and a bleed line at the bottom. The trim width is only 0 0.125 on its own because it's the inner edge does not require bleed. That's where, your, that's where your spine is. So that page goes into the spine. You don't need to worry about it being trimmed off for bleed because your spine will take care of that. It's, got, it's called the gutter, and the gutter is always slightly wider. We'll come to that. So cover finish. KDP covers are printed on 80 GSM, a 220 GSM paper, white paper stock with glossy or matte finish. And that's just some detail on there. Matte finish has minimal sheen and a subtle polished look. It's typical for no novels and other fictions. Be careful with glossy finish. Um, it, on, a, on 80 or 220 GSM white paper stock, that's glossy, the page, the front page covers tend to curl. Matte finish is, has less of a curl. So if you don't want the covers of your book to curl up after a little while, use matte, and it looks better anyway. Although, you know, it says there that glossy pages are used for children's books. So the importance of page size and bleed, we're back on it again. 
If your trim size is 6x9, the page size physically will be 6.125x9.250. That's a single page. But as you will see when we come to the um, example templates that I'm using, if you set in Affinity Publisher, set facing pages on, then all of this is taken care of you for you. You don't need to set an extra size. So just pick 6x9 with bleed on and everything is done for you. So all of the templates here have bleed enabled. Trim size is a term that you will hear about quite often when you're printing your book. And I repeat again, it refers to the size of the book when it is in its final form. This is the size that the book will be when it's trimmed, hence the word trim size. And trimming of the book happens after the binding process, when the book block has the cover attached. All the above sizes we've talked about refer to the trim size of the book. Now let's have a look at some other areas. This is 3.1, the importance of page size and bleed. What's the standard size of a paperback book in the UK? If you're producing a standard fiction book, then you can be safe to set your book in one of the more common book types, either B format or A5, which are those sizes. There is no set standard paperback size for all books, as the size differs with genre and market. These are all trim sizes, and I've tried to list them there where they're most common. A format, Penguin Books are a particular size. You ever browse through a bookshelf, you come across the Penguin Books, easily distinguishable. B format, UK and US, very common format, B format. You'll find that common in the US and common in the UK. If you set your book to B format size, it's very easily reproducible. And there's the others, Demi, A5, Royal, Royal Octavo, American, US Trade, that's your 6x9 one. That's the very common one in the US, but not in the UK. American Narrow, A4 and Custom Sizes. Beware of custom sizes. You'll have a lot of trouble if you send them a custom size book. Is book trim size a minefield? In short, yes. <laughs> so stick with a popular format. And there's a list. A format books are dinky little books, perfect for readers on the go. Airport fiction, but now you'll see it used widely for reprints of classics and niche fiction like self-help or humour. B format books in the UK and the US are probably the most widely circulated in the UK, being the industry standard for most paperback fiction. If you're unsure about which size to choose for your book, B format is a pretty safe bet. And so on down the list. You'll see it's stocked widely across both physical and online bookstores and most print-on-demand sites will feature the B format as one of their recommended sizes for self-publishers. And I would think, generally speaking, you don't need to worry about the others unless you have a particular type of book that needs... A, a, a slightly different size. Now we're only briefly covering covers because they're fairly self-evident and they're also a design feature that we'll go into um, a little bit later and is covered in great detail in another video that I've done, Designing a Cover. And you'll find that on my YouTube channel along with this video. It's there somewhere. So bleed for your cover. For production reasons, all covers need to have bleed. If you set your page up with no bleed, they'll send it back to you and say, do it again. Use the following formula to calculate your cover size. There's your paper thickness for cream paper, white paper or colour interior type. And they're the thicknesses of your page. The number of pages at that thickness affects your spine width. So to calculate your spine width, that's the paper thickness by page count. Now remember when you count your pages you've got the recto and verso that's left and right page. So you've got the front and back of the page. So you, 
a print in, in text, you've actually got two pages on one because you're printing either side of a sheet of paper. So that's your paper thickness. So if you've got 240 words, 240 pages showing in your Affinity Publisher page count, that's 140, uh, what did I say, 240? That's 120 physical pages. So that's 120 times the paper thickness. The trim height, and there you have it, two times the bleed plus equals spine height. And spine width, uh, trim height, sorry, silly me, plus two times the bleed is your spine height, and the spine width is that calculation there. Calculate the exact size of the cover. So trim width, trim height, spine width, bleed area. Lots of maths for you to amuse yourself with there. Now the supplied covers have everything done for you as far as I know. Just use that, keep that layer in, in your document and hide it when you're exporting it. That's the wonder of Affinity Publisher. All you need to do is put in your images and text, adjust your cover template for any size changes of course, um, but keep it within those calculations. Calculating your spine thickness is probably the most difficult part. Take some time with it. So, here we are, setting up an Affinity Publisher preset. I'll start with building a preset for the first size in the list, then do the rest which are, after all, only copies with different sizes. Now remember, these are the same as the Word templates used and, and freely available from KDP. You can download the Word templates from KDP if you want to check, but there they are. Generally, the margins stay the same, as does the bleed. So we'll start with a 5 by 8 book. If you don't want to use bleed, then that's your page size. However, I'd strongly advise you to include bleed, and all of the ones I've got here do include bleed. The actual page size, physically, when you're finished, will be that calculation, as already mentioned. But if you set your preset to 5 by 8 and include bleed that will be done for you. Now let's have a look at your page setup in Affinity Publisher My Presets. Note in the first instance I haven't yet named the preset and you can see it there it's custom at the top of the list in the left hand one. In image one I have the margins and bleed set in a margin with gutter is set to 0.76 Inner bleed is set to zero because it's the spine edge, so it won't be trimmed anyway. But the outer is 0.125 inch, the bleed, and it's the same top and bottom. Now, if you look at the margins, the outer margin is 0.6, and the inner margin is 0.76. That's to account for the gutter, the piece of the page that disappears into the spine. So you don't want to be trying to crack open the book to read those words down the inner edge. Page 2, or shall we say image 2, is the completed preset ready to create the publisher blank file with blank pages to start with. Now you can see, let's have a look at image 1. It's 5 by 8 by 300 dpi in inches. Embedded images, if you have any. Facing pages, which we need. Don't try and do individual pages. You'll run into all sorts of problems because Publisher doesn't seem to be capable of having no bleed on one side of a single page without a lot of, without a lot of messing about. So it's better not to go there. You can, equally, you can easily apply uh, masters that are facing pages to single pages in your text. Include margins, yes, and you can see them, and include bleed, yes, you can see them. Now, the preset, once it's built, and before I've clicked create, you right-click on the preset and give it a name. In this case, it's 5x8 paperback. Now, setting up the master pages. In, this, in these, all of these templates, I've got a number of master pages set up, 
The first extra master page to set up is a copyright page. Now, you can have this and it saves you typing it all in again. Every time you do a book, you've got to type all this stuff in. These are the first about eight or nine pages I've set up as master pages, exactly as they have them in the KDP templates. In all of the KDP Word Masters, this second facing page has different margins to all the rest. Its margins are top and bottom are one inch, the outer is one inch and the inner edge margin is 1.25. It's in a little bit to account for the gutter. This will nearly always be and probably should be verso. So the gutter is on the right side of the page. Verso meaning left and recto meaning right, remember. So the copyright is nearly always on a left-hand page. It doesn't have to be, but it's kind of a standard. Other master pages, I like to set up the other master pages so they can be applied at any point in the construction of the book. This includes mostly the first or early pages in the book, title, copyright, and sometimes seven or more pages. The only thing you really have to think about with these pages is their position in the book, recto or verso. I've included them in these templates because KDP has them, and also I think they're a good idea because you can change them to suit your book and apply them where you like, keeping in mind the recto verso position as marked on each master page. Now I've given each master page a name and it also, that name also has whether it's a recto or verso page. Let me say here that you may have other ideas and other settings. That's entirely fine. <laughs> the world is full of changes. I'm reproducing the settings given in the Word Masters from the KDP website. That's why my ones look like they do. Now a word of caution about adding text frames to the master pages. Anything you put on a master page will be repeated throughout your book where your book uses that master page. This is why I have the copyright page set up as a master page of its own. As it's nearly always a verso page, you can set the spread margins to reflect this. And you can see them there. Inner is 1.25, the outer is 1 inch. So that pushes it across to the side a little bit. Now the whole collection of master pages, and you can see them there, title, copyright, dedication, table of contents, and table of contents continued, or a blank page, acknowledgements, and lastly, the start of the manuscript proper. Chapter 1, for example. A chapter should always start on the recto or right page. It doesn't have to, but it's a nice convention. This can't be done with e-books, and that's why you'll rarely see an e-book with the pages so adjusted, because changing the size of the device you're reading your e-book on pushes everything around. Um, so you can't do that. But in a print book, you should start a chapter on the right-hand side. Pick up nearly any good print book you see and have a look at where the chapters start. You may not have noticed it before, but they do always start, or should, start on the right page, the recto. And you can see I've got them there. Title, recto, copyright, verso, dedication, recto, and so on. Now I've got text in those text fields. And in some cases you'll want it and in some cases you won't. If you produce your pages and when you, <laughs> when you look at your pages you've got other text in there, check your master pages because you may well have text on a text frame on a master page and that will end up on your pages. Changing page sizes and dimensions is not something you want to do often. It's not something you'd, I advise you to do at all, actually, especially when you have a completed document. But sometimes it happens. The power of master pages comes into its own in this regard. However, you can change individual pages or master pages. It's a powerful tool, and Affinity Publisher does this really well. 
This completes the explanation and the layout. Margins and bleeds are common to all templates and the covers are reproductions of the covers supplied by KDP. So one can only assume that KDF, that should be KDP, have it right. Be aware that other on-demand and commercial print houses may and most certainly do have different requirements, especially bleed widths and trim sizes. You'll find these easier to change in the templates should that be necessary. I've not included any templates for ebooks in this exercise because as a general rule just use the 6x9 inch template, no bleed and no table of contents. Acknowledgements and dedications usually go at the end of an ebook, not the beginning. And there's a whole video on doing ebooks elsewhere on my YouTube channel. I haven't gone into a great deal of detail on the covers. As I mentioned before, there's an entire video on doing a nice cover elsewhere on my YouTube channel. So thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel, share the love.